All right, so um, we're back with um, part three of our Adobe SpeedBridge CS6 um, user interface. And um, I would advise if you haven't seen part one and part two yet, um, please um, take a look at that, all right? Because there's a whole bunch of information you wouldn't want to miss, okay? So let's dive right into it. Um, we already have our um, footage, our clips um, sorted out here um, nicely on our desktop. We have a timeline created, okay? So now what next? All right, I'll tell you what next. If you want to get from the desktop into your viewer, all right, you use the keyboard um, letter D, okay? And when you click on D initially, you're gonna have this because now you're gonna have a one-to-one -one pixel mapping, okay? That is why it's all blown out. If you want to scale this to fit um, your space here, what you do is you use Command Home, or control home if you are on a Windows based system. Over here we have um, our stereo button. Now this basically if you are working with stereoscopic 3D footage you would want to enable this. Now anytime you enable this you're gonna have the benefit of the stereo 3D tab here and you're gonna have an extra button showing up here for 3D. So as soon as I enable that, now I have the benefit of the Serial 3D tab here, all right? And I have an extra button here. Now the button here is used to select how you want to work because usually in stereo, you're working with the left eye and the right eye to footage, okay? So unless you choose whether you want to grade your left eye, your right eye, or you want to grade both eyes together, all right? We are not in a stereo project, so I will deselect this. Over here is your frame rate, okay? Um, we work in, in a 2397 environment, all right? Um, here is origin. Now, origin basically changes the um, time code on your timeline. It usually defaults to zero hours anytime you start speed grade, but you see I have mine at 10. You could change yours to whatever you want, so um, you just click on this. Let me just put it back on default. Okay, I hit return. Okay, so you see it starts from 000. So if that is not what you want and you want uh, to have your own personal time code, you click on once. And in my case, I want 10 hours. So I type in 10, hit control, um, sorry, return on my keyboard, and everything just changes. All right, so now I, I start from 10 hours. Okay, calibration. Um, this here gives you the benefit of using lookup tables or LUTs, all right? Now, LUTs is very important, especially um, if you grade in for either television or you grade in for um, cinema or right, the theater. I mean, if you're doing something for the web, you might not want to do that. But basically, if you're working on a feature or a short or something that you know is going to end up on, on, on the TV screen, you might want to use LUTs, okay? Because every monitor is calibrated differently. All right, so uh, I might grade this beautiful scene here, and I have my pillar here looking all red and nice. And I will send it to my VFX guy to do some further work on it, and he will tell me, "Oh, I'm seeing magenta." All right, that is because all monitors are calibrated differently. So you have to calibrate your monitor in certain standards so that whatever that you see here is what everyone is going to see on their monitor. Okay. And um, SpeedGrid actually ships with some presets. So there's a couple of presets here, but you can actually use your own, okay? If you have um, lots created by your DIT, or if you have lots that have been given to you by um, the cinema house that you'll be showing your sequence at, okay? You could just um, click this um, button here to import your lot, and you could start working on it. Um, one thing I, could, uh, I want to let you guys also note, anytime that you use a calibration feature here, it applies to everything on this timeline, every single clip, okay? There is a way that you could actually go in every single clip and use different lots for every single clip, all right? I really don't know why you would want to do that, but you have the function there, all right? But if you use this, it's going to apply to everything here, all right? Um, this button is pretty much um, self-explanatory. Um, you enable or disable your grade. So if I go into my looks and I apply a nice magenta look to this, and I come here, I call disable this or enable this um, there's also a keyboard shortcut for this okay you could um, click and hold zero on your numpad and you see what just happened 
it goes away when I release it it comes back so let's just say I want to show uh, my client how it looked before I could either just click and hold on zero on my numpad or I could just come here and just toggle it on and off. all right enable layer compositing um, this is basically if you want to do um, uh, composites okay let's just say um, your VFX guy all right he um, did a nice rotoscoping of my actors phrase here and he sends me a mat with an alpha channel all right if I want to use the benefit of that mat here I could enable this here and I could just use um, the same mat that was created by my VFX guy all right okay so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disable this grade if you want to disable a grade you use the keyboard shortcut shift alt and delete all right and it's gone okay over here our the red green and blue button is used to create a grading track all right so basically you click and hold on and you drag it on top of your tracks all right and you have a grading track now the benefit of this grading track is it call it uh, it works actually like an adjustment layer and um after effects okay if you are um, familiar with after effects you know that you could use adjustment layers and you could apply an effect to that layer and it is gonna affect everything that is on the bottom here so if I go ahead here on my um, grid my grid track and I apply my good old magenta look okay even though I applied it to this track here it is affecting my clip all right the good thing about it is you could drag the handles to affect as many clips as you want. So right now I do not have that magenta um, correction here, a grade here on my clip. But if I want to do that, I'll just extend this onto that. All right. Then as I play back, now it is applied to it. Okay. As you can see, I don't have it here either. I could just drag it to wherever that I want and boom. All right. I have the same thing. So it is a very quick way to work if you do not want to just... Um, copy paste copy paste copy paste this is like a very fast way to just apply a quick grade on a whole number of clips at one time all right I'll just go ahead and blow this away the next thing here is dissolves now um, nine out of ten times you might not want to use dissolves okay um, it is all up to you what you're trying to do but let me go back into my desktop and I'll show you how to work with these here so I'm gonna put this um, clip here on top of uh, this other clip here so I have a clip on top and one beneath okay let me go back into my viewer now the way this works is it is normal that if a clip is on top of another clip whatever is on top is the one that is going to show in the viewer but what if I want to see what is um, below it okay so you use this arrow here that is looking down you drag it into the middle of it and see what just happened now even though I have this um, clip on top of um, this one here okay I'm able to basically see bypass this and see what is beneath that okay so this is what that is for let me take that away here this here I might dissolve so um, I want to create a nice effect where I have sort of like um, a slow blend between them okay so I'm gonna see the two layers together like a nice dissolve okay and I'm gonna you know let's say just add different um, kind of grades to them so you could just drag this one here put in the middle and now I see a dissolve between them okay so they like embedded in each other okay and the, um, the great thing about this is you could just go in each of the layers let's just say I'll make this blue okay I'll go here and I'll make this yellow okay so it kind of blends together all right and you could create some real good effects with that all right so let me get rid of this okay I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna disable my grade delete that delete that and if you want to delete a grade shift alt and delete all right all right I will just um, just leave this here for now okay here is some um, to create like solid um, clips or solid layers. so let's say I need a nice you know black layer or white layer I could just drag drop it you know I have a white layer here okay I get rid of this pan and scan now pan and scan works just like grade okay the grading track it creates a whole nother track on top of everything on here only difference between um, the pan and scan and the grading track is the grading track you have the benefit of handles so you could actually drag it wherever that you want um, the grid to affect for pan and scan you don't have that option okay so it basically applies it to everything now if at any point you want to change your pan and scan 
um, through the clips you might have to use this beautiful diamond shaped things here called keyframes all right so that is the only uh, downside to this all right so I'm just gonna get rid of that grouping is another function that is very important um, if you want to um, work in a very managed or uh, very organized way okay for instance in this short film here we had um, two major scenes okay um, it's it's like a 15 minute short film and um, the first part of the scene was all exterior so we see our characters um, walking on the streets of Harlem New York City and um, doing their thing all right and the action just follows goes through interior that where well, that is where the whole film just continues to the end of it all right so knowing that let's just say okay this is my timeline I want to have my interiors separate I want to have my exterior separate okay so what I use is grouping okay so I drag this here to the bottom all right and the one that is facing down I drag it to the top then see what just happens it creates something like a cage so now I know that everything that is in this session here is just my exteriors okay so even you know sometimes you have so much clips on your timeline you forget what is what and you might apply certain grades to certain things you don't need to apply grades to okay so this will let you move faster because now everything is grouped and um, you know you work in the way you want to all right so I'm just gonna um, undo this the command Z all right um, I'm not gonna really talk much about consolidate rails here okay um, this is gonna come up when we're dealing with EDLs all right scene change detection or detect now this is also a very good feature okay uh, let's just say you um, you have your editor call you and it's like hey listen I don't have no EDLs I don't have no XMLs I don't have no AAFs okay I just have one quick time movie um, how do how do we work on that it's fine let him send you that one full quick time movie of the commercial or music video or film or whatever it is and once you bring it and import it right here in speed grade on your timeline you could use scene change detect to detect each and every cut in the film and it's going to separate them into different reels or different clips so that you can work on them separately all right another brilliant feature here in um, speed grade cs6 is this button here now for example okay i come here in my my scene okay i give it a nice it's a nice contrast okay my infamous magenta okay okay so let's just say I like this grade here okay I love this now I'm saying to myself oh man did I just shoot myself in the foot because this grid looks nice and it's gonna work for everything here but I didn't apply it to a grid layer I just applied it by itself how do I get it on everything here now this is where the good old button here comes in now this is called extract grade okay once I click this button here, it is going to extract whatever grade is on this clip and make it a grade track. So now I have the benefit of applying that grade track on everything beneath here. Okay, so I'll just click on this. Boom. See what just happened? Okay, and usually it's going to create three different um, tracks. You want because we have three different clips. Okay, but you just want to go ahead and just take this and blow it away. Okay, because the correction is going to be right here on top of this one directly above this. So now you have the option to just drag these handles here, okay? As you can see, there is nothing here, okay? But as I drag the handles, boom, you see the grid is applied, okay? And that grid is applied, all right? When I pull it out of there, you're going to see it changes. It's gone, okay? So that is what this button here is for. So um, the last thing I'm going to talk about in this session here is saving your IRCP. Basically, it's telling you to save. Um, your session so when I click on that save timeline so it's the same thing as this button here alright then you could save um, your session 